AI is BS. Need to do more homework and music and just <laughs> so some of the AI. Uh, I, I've talked about AI a lot, and we've done a lot of AI-driven streams where I should say shouldn't say it's driven. Uh, we use AI like Copilot and stuff to make programming easier, maybe to write some functions, and that's usually a pretty good thing. So AI is pretty good on that side of things. When you look at AI from like a thumbnail perspective, let, let me just walk you through how I would create a thumbnail. And a lot of people, I got upset. I had a guy in the, in the comments the other day saying, you should hire an artist, uh, AI stealing jobs. And I'm, I just have one thing. If you lose your job to AI, I'm sorry, you should have gotten another job because it's not that great. And if it's replacing you, that just means you need to, you need to level up and get some more skills. Uh, be funny if AI stole my job. <laughs> but anyways, let's uh let's go ahead and make a thumbnail here just to kind of showcase this. I use this uh playground AI. You could honestly spin your own uh stable diffusion server and you don't need to use something like this. I just kind of they do it for free and I kind of like, ah, that's good enough. Let's see if we can't open this project up. So let's say I want to make uh I think I have like my Windows utility uh, I need to make a thumbnail for it. So let's just workshop using AI. Ooh, AI. So this is just a, a basic stable diffusion with some makes it so the, the norm normies of the world can use it. So let's see. What do I want to do? I could use this image right here. That looks kind of cool. I, these are some of the past images I've done. But usually I just get in here and I go, hey, create a... Uh, Let's see, one of the upcoming one is conversion. Create a digital dark landscape with things converting to other things. <laughs> I usually just try to think of like some weird prompt and usually I just go right off of the, the first one. Um, but let's see what it, it creates. Yes, I'm back on Thorium. I know, I know. I'm no shh. Don't tell anybody. I'd still miss it. Uh, Florp was good. I, I mean, it's just uh, you know things don't work quite as well. I thought. Ooh, look at that. I kind of like that picture. It has nothing to do with what I typed in, but we're just gonna download and go with it. Um, so I'll usually just take this, whatever it spits out, just something unique. Is really what I'm looking for. And then I usually just take that and open it with GIMP. So usually I, I just pull this up and we we did the thumbnail thing. And I usually just come into like, let's say headshots. And then I do a bulk headshot thing. Like, you know, all those YouTubers that make stuff. Uh, I actually feed this through another GitHub project and just, I, I do one video where I like make a bunch of different faces. And then I take that two minute segment, chop up and make as many screenshots as I can. And then there's a remove BG bulk batch file that I basically feed that that into once I make all the video, uh, once I make all the PNGs. And then it just sits there and strips out the all the background without me doing anything. So then it just sits here and then you got all these weird, weird faces. So then I can be like, oh, okay. Um, let's, uh, oh, that's a funny one. Um, Ah, oh, let's let's just grab that guy. So then I just pull that in, face it down. Oh man, that's a huge head, huh? Let's scale it. I usually go like 900, let's say, bring it down just a hair. Ah, yeah, perfect. So then we have that, and then we just need file converter. Uh, so let's let's just grab the file converter. I don't even know what the. Usually I'll pull it up and let's. Let's go here, and I usually would go like file converter. This is a video I've got coming out soon, um, and this converts. Uh, do we have a icon? I think we might be able to just copy that image, paste it here. Bam. All right. So then we got file converter done. Sometimes I'm like, hey, I need like a little drop shadow. I do like a script foo script, drop a little shadow onto it. Great. Looks great. How do I look? Ah, eh, let's let's make me pop out a little more too. Done. And then um we could just do simple text. Uh everyone hates WebM. And 
you know, maybe maybe make a just workshop on this. Maybe WebM and then like a little arrow to PNG, right? I think that's a pretty good conversion. So, oh, let's just grab an arrow. Sometimes you can do a bunch of different arrows and you probably see a, uh, a bunch of common, uh, common icon arrows. So usually I just kind of come through here, scroll. I'm like, what kind of arrow do I want? I'm going to do a checkbox. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Ooh, double arrow. Ah, I feel like the double arrow should be sufficient. Let's just scale it down. We'll go like 100 for the width. Uh, scale. Yeah, that'll be good. And I'll just highlight all that. And just make it white. Uh, maybe a little bit less too. So we'll just scale it a little more. Let's go 100. Bam. And then usually I'll just do like a rotation. Well, let's just go negative 90 on the rotate. Bam. <laughs> Chop the arrow in half, though. Uh, that's a problem. Uh, edit. Uh, let's redo scale. I forgot to. Uh, now let's go negative 90. Rotate. I know Photoshop people are always like, ah, I can't believe you're doing this like this. This is crazy. But uh, yeah, I don't care. It works for me. It doesn't take much time. And then let's just go P and G. Sure. Something, something along those lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, most of this is low res and it gets uploaded. Uh, but yeah, I feel like that We'll just merge this down, merge this guy down, and then I'll just highlight it all, make it pop. So usually I do like a little bit of an outline, outline, bam, and then like a drop shadow like that. And this is how I use GIMP to make my thumbnails. Done. So I use AI a little bit. Uh, but overall, I spend about two to three minutes per thumbnail, may maybe five minutes, depending on uh, issues you have. Uh, but overall, heck, it works. So, yeah, there, there's my file convert thumbnail. Convert, converter uh, is what that one's called. So then I usually just save it out. That creates the XCF file. And then I usually just do a JPEG. And um, it's actually not to what YouTube likes. So usually I'll just upscale it to like a 720, something like that. Save it. And there we go. That's my that's my workflow. I just kind of want to show me utilizing AI a little bit. Uh, it's, it still uses a lot of manual intervention, obviously, to, to create semi-unique workflow. But uh, it's very fast. And GIMP's completely free. So a lot of people are like, I have to have Photoshop. And I do believe like if you're doing like 3D vectoring, you're doing generative fill, there's a lot of really cool Photoshop features. But inevitably, most people are just trying to do simple clones, maybe some drop shadows, might erase parts of here and there. And you can do all that in GIMP. And as I've shown, you can be just as efficient, just as fast and... It's by no means do you need to spend hours uh, using GIMP compared to Photoshop. I think the big thing is most people know Photoshop, and that's why uh, they are so adamant that they absolutely have to Photoshop. And like I said, digital artists definitely do, but I'm no digital artist. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a simple YouTuber that makes thumbnails that get scaled down usually to like 300 pixels. So it, it, to me, I don't really care. If AI screws up the face or the fingers, heck, it's actually probably a bonus because then people will look at it and go, what is, what's wrong with this picture? What? That's a good thing. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's why I like kind of AI art in, uh, in retrospect for doing YouTube thumbnails.